Hello everyone, my name is Alistair. I work at Western Digital as part of the RISC-V software research, research team. And today I'm here to talk about using PMP, ePMP and Rust to protect embedded kernels. So today's talk. First, I'm gonna start off talking about data execution protection or DEP then I'm going to, and write XOR execute. Then I'm gonna details about TOP and then I'm gonna start talking about RISC-V, PMP and ePMP and how we can use this for app and kernel isolation in TOC. And finally, I'm gonna cover limitations. So, data execution prevention, or DEP, and write X or execute are both used to achieve the same goals. And the idea is to prevent attackers from executing code that they load. So data execution prevention marks regions of memory as non-executable, while write X or execute marks a region of memory is either writable or executable, but never both. So for example, imagine a buffer overflow, uh, like a stack overflow, and the attacker can send a specially crafted input, maybe a network packet or a text string, and that overflows the buffer and then writes malicious code to memory, in this case, the stack. So without DP, that malicious code could then be directly executed. For example, the stack could have malicious code loaded and the return address of the function could be changed to jump to that code. So when the function returns, you get to execute your malicious code. So write XOR execute and DEP mean that attacker can't directly run their code because we've marked the stack as non-executable. Uh, so both of these have been enabled in desktop OSs for, for years now, and desktop OSs usually combine this with address space layout randomization, or ASLR, as a further hardening technique. So ASLR uh, just involves randomly laying out uh, bits of um, code and stuff in memory uh, to make it harder to guess where it's going to be. So according to a report from Microsoft, DEP just by itself breaks additional exploit techniques. Importantly though, it doesn't protect against everything. Uh, as you can tell, we still have vulnerabilities in desktop to class systems. Uh, and one of the reasons is because of return oriented programming or RFP, which I'm going to talk about at the end. So even though these two protections or two similar goals, you know, they don't protect against everything, uh, they do provide protection, uh, which is why they've been enabled in desktop operating systems for years, but generally embedded systems don't have something similar. And so, um, and I think it's worth considering that although, it, though it, like I said, it doesn't protect, protect against everything, it is a useful hardening technique. So, TOC. TOC is an embedded operating system written in Rust. Uh, it's asynchronous and all its operations are non-blocking. And it's designed for small platforms, specifically ones without an MMU. Uh, so being written in Rust, which is a memory safe language, helps avoid a number of memory safety issues. So for example, Google and Microsoft have both said that memory safety vulnerabilities account for around 70% of all vulnerabilities on Android and Microsoft products. Memory safety vulnerabilities include buffer overflows, as well as other issues such as use after free, double free, and invalid pointer dereferencing, as well as others. So using Rust helps avoid most of these common memory safety problems uh, seen in other languages. But in this case of TOC, as we're interacting, inter interacting with hardware, passing pointers by syscalls, or passing structs stored in flash, and other operations that require the unsafe keyword in Rust, we are still exposed to some potential bugs. So a quick overview of what the TOC kernel looks like. So he over here, we have the entire stack. So at the top here, we have the processors. And they can be written in any language. Uh, so either C, Rust, bare assembly, uh, and we protect against malicious applications. So let's say we have a malicious application. We use PMP uh, or memory protection to ensure that this application can't access either the kernel or other applications. We also use a SysTick timer uh, generally generated from the RISC-V M time uh, to ensure that although this application might want a denial of service, all the other applications it's unable to. And all of these processes run in new mode. Sorry about the writing there. Uh, so down here, we have the rest of the kernel. So this, everything down here runs in machine mode. Uh, so we have capsules over here. So capsules are considered untrusted. Uh, what this just basically means is that we're un we don't allow the unsafe keyword. Uh, the unsafe keyword is some extra power and rust. Um, I'm not gonna go into details today, but it basically just means that we have another layer of protection. Uh, and in these capsules is where kind of the higher level uh, functionality comes from. Things like BLE stack, console, uh, and things and SD card accesses, things like that. Note that none of this actually interfaces with hardware. 
it's just kind of higher level uh, code. So then we have the kernel. Uh, oops. The kernel does you know core things, your scheduler, it handles system calls, things like that. And then we have a device drivers down here and they interact with actual hardware. So both the kernel and the peripheral drivers uh, full, have to be fully trusted. They can do unsafe. They're accessing raw memory, you know, MMI operations, things like that. Uh, and traditionally, although we use Rust to kind of add some safety inside the kernel, all of the kernel runs at machine mode and all has the same accesses or access permissions. So RISC-V PMP. So physical memory protection or PMP is part of the base for its five spec. PMP allows machine mode software to restrict read, write, execute access. And this can either apply to all modes or just SMU mode. And in the case of TOC, we're normally not running S mode, so just U mode. And the machine mode software can configure this using the PMP address and configure CSRs. And the hardware heart will enforce all access permissions. So TOC originally used PMP to isolate apps from the kernel and each other, like I've been mentioning. Uh, it would do this by creating and removing PMP config options when uh, swapping to and from apps, so when context switching. So for example, here's a layout of apps in memory. Uh, so we have the CRC app. So this green here, uh, this green here, is the, the full access. So we can The app can read, write, and execute. This is in the memory, includes things like the heap, the stack, and, and anything else the app needs. Uh, above it, the grant region up here, uh, that's that, although that's per app uh, and stores app relevant information, that's only accessible by the kernel. Uh, and then down here we have flash. So this is just read only memory. And so this provides app isolation, uh, but doesn't protect the, the uh, and doesn't provide any protections from the kernel. The kernel can read, write, and execute all regions of memory. So for example, an app could trigger a kernel to execute malicious code inside the app. Uh, at least in, in theory, there's no hardware stopping us from doing that. Uh, the other thing is the context switches. So PMP, have, we are lucky that we don't have a lot of overhead from context switching. So when we jump to the app for the first time, we'll configure the PMP, jump to the app, run the app code, and then we'll return to the kernel. When we return to the kernel, we don't have to make any changes because the app permissions don't apply to machine mode. So the kernel can do what it wants. And then when it returns to the user space, if it's returning to the same app, we can just leave the configuration as it was uh, and you know, save con any work in the context switch. Or if we're turning, but if we're returning to a new app or a different app, uh, we'll reload the new configuration. Now this means we have a pretty quick, you know, pretty small context switch overhead from enabling PMP. So recently, Talk has added support for some RISC V boards, and now, and we're now using write XOR execute support for the kernel. So this means that kernel regions such as the stack, data, and BSS are all marked as non-executable. And the kernel text or code is marked as non-writable. This is locked in the PMP uh, so that the TOC is unable to change these permissions. This is also the only way we can get it to, import, to apply to machine mode. So this is a good step uh, and definitely is another hardening technique. And this makes it more difficult for attackers to inject executable code. We still have a lot of code, say in user space, uh, where we're unable to apply permission checks or permission enforcement in the hardware. So RISC-V ePMP is the enhanced PMP, and it's an extra extension that's currently in the draft state. It's being worked on by the T group, the Trusted Execution Environment group, uh, and it's at version 0.9.1. So ePMP extends PMP by adding a default deny option, and that allows creating more fine-grained region types to limit exposure of user mode from kernel mode and enforce more restrictions of shared memory regions. ePMP also adds a rule-blocking bypass, or RLB, but that can be used to modify locked regions. This is useful, for example, in a multi-stage bootloader, as a bootloader can protect themselves during runtime or unlock themselves, uh, but then allow complete runtime configuration later by tearing this all down using the RLB bit. So ePMP is also useful for an embedded OS, as it allows the OS to isolate apps from the kernel and blocks unallocated regions by default. Uh, so for ePMP, TOC creates regions similar to PMP the main difference is that TOC creates a read and write region for user space, which allows TOC to read and write the user space uh, access areas, and then enables a deny all. So any region that isn't covered by a PMP region uh, is, de is denied. So here's the, again the TOC architecture, uh, and it looks similar to before. So the main difference is that 
we now have projections for the kernel over the entire space. So up here in the processes, uh, we just have read write ex uh, sorry just read write. So talk cannot execute this code. Uh, and down here we apply the same inside the kernel. We apply the same protections I mentioned earlier. So for example, the stack is not executable. So the final last section, the limitations. So the write XOR execute and DP limitations. Now they don't prevent all attacks. So clearly desktop systems that have these for years and still have vulnerabilities. So one of the main ways around this is return oriented programming. And so this is where a attacker will jump to already included functions and run snippets of them. So for example, uh, there could be a, you know, a function that has 100 assembly instructions and you could jump to the end at assembly 75 and get the function to and run that code to get some desired output attack. Uh, effect that the attacker wants uh, and then return and you know keep and bridge those together. Uh, the lack of ASLR in embedded systems makes RP very predictable. Uh, unfortunately there's not a lot from a software side we can do. There are things in software that you can do you, that can mitigate these attacks. But they generally take at a large uh, code size, um, for example 20 to 30 percent uh, I've seen in some in some implementations. Uh, and for embedded systems that tox targeting this is not you know this is not acceptable. Uh, we don't have the space to kind of spend that much um, on mitigations. Uh, there's other things that can be done in hardware, but I'm not going to go into that today. So PMP and EPMP. Uh, so although I think PMP and EMPMP uh, in particular add a hardening technique, uh, they even in embedded systems, they still do have limitations. So PMP, there isn't fine grained control of MS and U permissions. Uh, so this just means that we either have to apply it to everything or just S and U mode. We can't apply things to say just M mode. Uh, so once a PMP region is locked, which is the only way to get it to apply to machine mode, it can't be changed. This makes it difficult to work with multi-stage bootloaders uh, as each one wants to lock the regions. And not all cores provide enough PMP regions to protect uh, for us to all use. So TOC uses TOR, so top of range, which means we need two PMP regions for every actual memory protection region, one start address and one end address. Uh, we do this to avoid uh, space being wasted by alignment constraints. PM RISC-V PMP has other uh, power of two, for example, um, base protection or ways to specify addresses. But this end with alignment, this means we end up wasting space. And like I mentioned earlier, these small and better systems, we don't have either flash or memory um, to be losing with alignment constraints. Uh, so some, so that means we need four just to do app permissions. Uh, and for the fan more complex things, so stack and stuff protection, we actually need about 16. And some, a lot of cores just come with four regions. So it'd be great to see hardware vendors ship with you know, at least 16 PMP regions, uh, if not more. And the RISC-V spec allows up to 64. So ePMP limitation is that TOC must disable user space regions when running in the kernel uh, to allow buffer sharing. So this is because otherwise the user space one will match on the kernel and we won't be able to have access to, to these buffers. And the reason we need this is because the way TOC's designed uh, is the app will say create a region, so it will malloc a chunk of memory and then pass that to the kernel as a buffer. So for example, if the app wanted to do an I2C operation, it would allocate a buffer and say do I2C read as a syscall. Uh, the kernel would go and do the I2C operation on the hardware and get the result back and save it in the buffer before returning to the app. The app can create that buffer anywhere inside its, its memory addresses and its memory space. So the kernel needs to be able to read and write all of the app memory space. Uh, there's thoughts of ways to improve this in the future uh, so that we could say restrict even write access from the kernel to this memory except when required by syscall operations, uh, but right now we don't support anything like that. So as I have discussed, Talk and other embedded kernel systems can now utilize PMP and ePMP to apply enhanced protections for the machine mode kernel. With PMP, we can apply write, XOR, execute to the kernel regions to limit the code execution possibilities from over buffer overflow attacks. With ePMP, we can extend this and apply access restrictions to all of memory. And this allows us to use the hardware to reduce the code loading and attack surfaces of the machine mode kernel. And although these techniques won't prevent all attacks, I believe they're useful to improve overall embedded security, and this is a great feature of RISC-V. And that's the end of my presentation. I should be around now to answer any questions.
Okay, I, I think you have a few minutes. Um, Alistair, if you want to check out the Q&A, see if there's anything you want to answer. Uh, yep, I don't see anything, in, right? Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask, or you can email me later as well if you think of more. Oh, there's a chat. Uh, would it make sense to run the kernel in S mode uh, without an MMU? Uh, we don't have PMP control in S mode, so the kernel couldn't then configure the PMP regions. Any other questions for Alistair? And so just, I guess if anyone's interested in EPMP, there's QMU work, uh, QMU patches that should be merged soon. Uh, and Open Titan also has EPMP support in the hardware. So you can try it out with yourself as well. Okay, that's it then. <laughs>